Hello builders, I'm Martin and this is Make Your Own Sound, the channel in which we're talking about how to create your own sound mixing console, episode 4. In the previous episode, which you can watch here if you haven't already, I showed you the software which powers the consoles that I've built in the last 7 years. I chose to start our journey with the software first, simply because it's more fun and you can get some results quicker and cheaper. That's because you may already have a good enough computer and a sound card so you can hear and see results today. That's why in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the software for the first time and use it. Let's go! The program we are going to work with today is called Software Audio Console or SAC for short. If you want to know more about this program or how to get it, it's all in my previous video right here. But if you want to use it successfully, you'll need the proper hardware. Let's see what's important. First, the computer. Your computer doesn't have to be especially powerful for you to begin. For example, I use this Lenovo W500 for smaller events. It's a 10-year-old laptop with a Core 2 Duo processor. But what's more important, it's a well-built and very stable computer with good drivers for its hardware. I'm willing to guess you might not get good results if you try to use some netbook with Intel Atom or Celeron processor. Older or second-hand PC, laptop or a Mac running bootcamp with an i5 or i7 processor will do a much better job. But today is not for exceptional results, it's for you to feel and see how things work. So use what you have. Next, the operating system. SAC only works on Windows, so we'll stick to that for now. For best results, the operating system must be well optimized for low latency audio and not be used for anything else. We'll deal with that in the next two videos. Today, we'll work with what we have already installed. Mac users, again, could try Bootcamp. Next, the sound card. This here is the really important stuff. For the whole thing to work, you'll need a professional or semi-professional sound card. It doesn't have to be expensive, the cheapest ones that work start at around 100 euros or 120 dollars. But the sound card must have real ASIO drivers. Something like ASIO for all won't work because it won't give you low latencies. Consumer cards like the one that comes built in your motherboard or even something like these won't work either you will actually need something like these. There are models that go directly to the PCI Express slot on your motherboard or plug to your computer via USB 2 or 3 or USB-C, Firewire 400 or 800 or Thunderbolt 2 or 3. All of these can and probably will work. But for today and for this video, I beg you, please, don't buy a sound card just to try things. If you already have one, it's okay, but if you don't, check if a friend of yours won't lend you one for a few days. Or as a last resort, try to rent one if it's cheap enough. If you buy something small and inexpensive like this, for example, that has only two inputs of questionable quality and several weeks from now you decide that you actually want to build a mixing console but you need four or eight or sixteen inputs for your work, then this cheap interface will be good for nothing. So if possible, try for free now and later buy things that you can actually use. Ok, with that out of the way, let's get to real work. In this particular moment I have several sound cards, today I will use the smallest and the cheapest of all. This is Native Instruments Complete Audio 6 and it connects via USB 2.0. Get your sound card, connect it to your computer and install the latest drivers if you haven't already. Then go to rmllabs.com, go to support, then to product downloads and download the latest demo version of SAC from here. Then you can install it. It's very easy with just the several clicks. There is no activation or anything bothersome. Ok, we are now ready to start the program. If you didn't change the path during installation, SAC should have installed directly in your C drive in a folder called SAC Demo. Go there and here it is. Before we start the program, let's do a small optimization. Click on the icon with your right mouse button and select Properties. Go to Compatibility, 
click here and select Windows XP Service Pack 3. Then select this option and click OK. Now we can start the program. On first start, SAC will give you some tips and then it will tell you what the limitations of the demo version are. Obviously, you can use plugins only on the first 8 input channels, on the first 2 aux returns and on the first 4 output tracks. The audio will disappear on random intervals and you can use only 2 remote connections. That's ok for now. First, let us configure SAC to work with your sound card. Go to Options then Audio Driver Model and select ASIO Protocol. You'll be presented with a list of all the sound cards that are connected to your computer and have ASIO drivers installed. Select the one that you have. I'll select my complete Audio 6. Now we'll need to check the driver's buffer size. Go to Options again, then Audio Driver Model and select ASIO Driver Setup. You should see a dialog box with your driver settings. Now's the time to mention that the settings of every sound card look different, but what we are trying to find is fundamentally the same. I'll try to give you some examples, but the sound card models in the world are so many that I just can't test them all and show them to you. <laughs> Sorry. Here's how this menu looks on the complete Audio 6. We are looking for the sample rate and for the buffer size settings. Here's the sample rate where you can choose from 44.1 kHz, 48 kHz and above and the buffer size here is called process buffer and when you go into it you'll see numbers. These are audio samples. We are mostly interested in the numbers 32, 64, 128, 256 and so on. Here's another example. That's how this menu looks on this Focusrite Scarlett 2 i4. It's actually simpler. Here's the sample rate and here's the buffer size. Next example. This is also a Focusrite, but the model is different. This one is Sapphire Pro 40. As you can see, this thing is quite different than the previous one. This card has a software mixer and the settings are built into it. Here's the sample rate and if we go into the settings, we'll find the ASIO buffer size. And the numbers are the same. Last example. This is the RME UCX and here are the settings. The sample rate and the buffer size. I have several RME cards, but their settings are almost identical, so one example is enough. Ok, following these examples, when you open the settings of your sound card, try to find the same two things, the sample rate and the buffer size. I'll go back to my complete Audio 6 card. I suggest for now to select 48000Hz for a sample rate and 1024 samples for a buffer size. This will not be our final setting for the buffer though. A buffer this big will give you a large latency, but will make your audio stable. First we'll check if everything works and then we'll try a smaller buffer. Let's now close this thing and look at some more settings. Go to Mixer, Sample Rate and select 48000Hz. Again Mixer, then Resolution and select 24 bits. Next, go to Options and select Force Single CPU. And again, Options and select Force Real Time Priority Class. And that's all the settings we'll need to begin. In the videos to come, we'll explore more settings and talk about what everything does, but for now, let's start simple. Ok, the next thing is very important. If you close SAC now and reopen it, all the things we just did will be forgotten. That's done for safety and I'll explain why in the future. Today, just remember, if you want your settings to stick, go to File, Preferences File and select Save Default. And every time we change a setting, you'll see me do the same thing again. Next, let's rearrange our workspace a bit. I guess when you installed the program, it looked more or less like mine. The way it looks may vary depending on your screen size and resolution. It's good to have a big screen and more real estate, but you can comfortably work on a 1080p resolution or even a little bit less. But if you go less than 1600 by 900 pixels on 16 by 9 screen or 1600 by 1200 pixels on 3 by 4 screen, it will definitely become harder. 
You just won't have much space for anything. Anyway, I'm not aware of every person's situation, so I'll assume that you have a 1080p screen because they're quite common these days. Now close this and this, go to view and select wide mixer. Let's move this over here and do this. Now I want to save the configuration of my workspace. I'll hold shift on my keyboard and press F1. Then click OK. Now this arrangement is saved on my F1 key and I can always go back to it. But just like before, if you want it to stick after restart, let's do the following. Go to File, F key File and choose Save Default. Then click OK. We are now ready to try and put some audio through our software. First we'll try to decide what type of audio source we'll use and then plug it into the appropriate input of the sound card. You may try a microphone or line level signal. I will try both. This sound card has two inputs on the front that can take microphone or line level and two more inputs on the back that are just for line level for a total of four analog inputs. I won't count the digital ones for now. I will plug a microphone into input 1 via a standard XLR cable. If you use a condenser microphone, don't forget to turn the phantom power on. And if the input level is too high or too low, adjust it with the gain knob. Then I'll use this 3.5mm jack to two 6.3mm jacks cable to plug my phone into the line level inputs on the back. Before we go back to the software, there's one more important thing to be done. You'll have to check your sound card and find the way it does direct monitoring. Then you'll have to turn it off. Almost every card has that, but the ways this is done are different. On simpler cards, it's more often a button or a knob. On my complete audio 6, it's this button on the monitor section over here. I'll make sure this is turned off. On another simpler card like this Focusrite, it's a knob that goes from input to playback. In that case, you'll have to turn it all the way to playback. More complex cards have their own mixers like for example this one on the Sapphire Pro 40 or this one on the RME cards. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what to do on every single card in the world, but your job is to make sure no input signal goes directly to an output on the card. Everything has to pass through the mixing software and not go around it. With that out of the way, let's go to the software and start the audio engine. It's this button over here, which you must click with your right mouse key. Then it lights up. Next, we'll assign physical inputs to our channels. You can check which input is which on your sound card. In my case, these are inputs 1 and 2, and on the back, these are inputs 3 and 4. So, I have my mic connected to input 1, and my phone connected to inputs 3 and 4. Now, back to SAC. I'll make channel 1 on the mixer to be my mono vocal channel using the microphone and I'll make channel 2 on the mixer to be my stereo music channel using the music from my phone. Let's do that. Select channel 1, go to input source, select mono devices and choose input 1. Then select channel 2, go to input source, select stereo devices and choose inputs 3 and 4. Now, if everything is done correctly, if I say something to the microphone, it should appear on the meter. Let's try. One, two, three, four, five. And if I play something on my phone, it should appear also. So far, so good. We have an input, but we are still not hearing anything. Our next step is to go and set up the output on the mixer. Take a look at these letters here. I stands for inputs, which are all these channels. R is for returns and O is for outputs. If we click on the R, we'll go to the 6 aux returns. And if we click on the O, we'll go to the 24 outputs. Remember, only 1 through 8 are real outputs which can be assigned to physical outputs on your sound card. Today I will use only stereo output 1. It will work exactly the same as the master fader on any other console. By default, it's already assigned to outputs 1 and 2, as you can see here. But if it's not, you can assign it manually the same way we did with the inputs. Select output 1, 
Go here and choose outputs 1 and 2. In my case, these correspond to the main physical outputs on my sound card in which I will plug my speakers. And don't forget to turn up the volume. As you can see, this sound card has more than one stereo output. Outputs 3 and 4 are right here. If I want to use them, I'll have to assign these outputs in the software. Like that. Go here and instead of outputs 1 and 2, select outputs 3 and 4. That way, the audio will go through these outputs instead of these ones. But not today. Today, I will use outputs 1 and 2. So, let's set them up again. You already know how to do it. Then, let's raise the volume of our master fader to about 0 dB. And after that, let's go back to our inputs by clicking on the eye. We are nearly ready. As you can see, the music on channel 2 is still playing. Now, all we have to do is raise this fader slowly and if everything is ok on your side, you should hear whatever you have put through your sound card and the software. Let's now mute the music and try the microphone. Raise the fader and say something. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, check. And you should hear your voice through your speakers or headphones, whichever you use. And if you use the microphone, you may have noticed that your voice comes through the speakers with significant latency. I saved the adjustment of the latency for last. If everything until now works well for you, which I hope is true, do the following. Stop the audio engine with the right button of your mouse. Go to Options and select Audio Device Setup. Then go here and change this to 1. Click OK. Next, go to ASIO driver setup as we did before. Reduce the buffer size one step from 1024 to 512 and close the panel. Then enable the audio engine and try the microphone again. You will still hear latency, but it will be less. You should now listen to the quality of the audio. Do you hear your voice clean or do you hear some artifacts like pops or clicks in the sound? If everything is clean, repeat the procedure and lower the buffer size one more step. And then one more step. Ideally, you should have clean audio with a buffer size of 128 samples and even 64 samples. In rarer cases, you might even be fine with 32 samples, but it's more dangerous and I wouldn't recommend it for now. When you start to hear artifacts or the audio totally falls apart like this, then go back one step. Experiment and see where things are stable. If you can't reach stable results at at least 128 samples, maybe the driver of your sound card is not good enough, but most probably your computer and which is more important, your operating system is not well optimized for real-time audio, which is very, very important. So, don't try anything else until you try to do this first. And that's why this will be the topic of our next two videos. So, see you there and thank you for watching. Oh, you're still here? Great! There are a few more important things I need to mention, like the video you just watched is part of a series and all the episodes are connected. So, if you stumbled on this episode by accident and you wasn't sure what exactly I was talking about, you can go and watch the previous episodes or at least the first episode over there, which explains the idea of the whole endeavor. And I'll be very happy if you liked the video. It's part of one big tutorial about how to build your own sound mixing console. So if you did, please consider clicking on the like button. And if you find this topic interesting or useful, you may subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified when I'm ready with the next video. And I know there are people out there who do what I do and know more than me. So, if you know something that I don't or have ideas for new episodes, please tell me. I'll be happy to also learn from you.